Hi everyone, so uh, the sessions are learning, running a little bit late and uh, as luck would have it, I am the last one before lunch and my stomach is growling too, so let me keep it short and sweet for all of you. Uh, not very difficult to guess that I have an engineering and technology background, so uh, don't get opportunity to attend such sessions, such uh, conferences very often. So first of all, a big thank you to all the organizers. I, I'm finding it really well organized. Also hearing a lot about sustainable growth, very balanced perspective, uh, gender equity and travel, for instance. Uh, this morning, I also heard about mindful drinking, which my wife has been telling me for the last several years. I think I'll go and tell her that now this is a formal, there's a, it's in the vocabulary of travel now, mindful thinking. So without much ado, let's get ahead. I will talk about some of the experiences from a practitioner's perspective that we've had with data. So let's get into it. This is what we do. Uh, I hope several of you are aware of Make My Trip as an OTA, leading OTA in India. Uh, what we have been a few years ago, it was mostly a B2C direct to consumer brand and the brands are all listed on the lower left hand side. Over the last few years, we have actually uh, graduated and evolved into more of a platform. And that platform you can see in terms of the B2B, uh, corporate travel from my base and then uh, open APIs for my affiliate through which we power Amazon and Google Pay and Phone Pay and SDFC and a bunch of other affiliates and partners that we have. And then the My Partner platform for travel agents. So, that the whole business has evolved into more of a platform, travel platform, and not just as a uh, uh, direct to consumer brand. And that actually, that has become a core part of how we operate as a company, even on the technology backbone. And that's how we build our software also, that any new use case, any new line of business can be composed quickly from co uh, pre-existing platform components. And uh, maybe that's another topic for another day. Let me talk about the data journey that we have. Uh, we've been at it almost for seven, eight years now, uh, experimenting quite a bit. There's a problem doing data science and personalization and data engineering, uh, data science modeling for the tribal domain. Primarily, I'll, I'll give you an exa a small example. Uh, if you go and buy a toothbrush, the context is the same. I mean, everyone who buys a toothbrush, I can always cross-sell uh, toothpaste to that person, to that customer. And if the customer, I mean, if you're doing, uh, uh, bu buying bathroom supplies, for instance, I could recommend you shampoo and soap and every, I mean, shampoo doesn't apply to me, obviously, but uh, those are relevant recommendations that come out. So, uh, but in the case of travel, every travel has a context. It's not just the product that you buy, but it's also the context in which you travel. When you're traveling over a weekday on business, your considerations of shopping are very different from uh, consideration of traveling with family or with, uh, with older parents or with younger kids. The consideration in shopping are very different. Therefore, personalizing travel is a little bit hard because there's a context behind it. It's just not, it's not the same context every time you travel. This is how the typical journey is, and this is true of all organizations. Uh, you start on the left side, which is the easy part. You start doing the uh, hindsight, and then as you learn more about your consumers and as you learn more about the supply ecosystem. So we sit between the supply and the demand, right? I mean, that, that's what we do at Make My Trip. So we are in the middle of a two-sided network. So there's a lot of intelligence that one can build on the supply side. And there's a lot of intelligence that one can build on the demand side for the users and consumers. So we sit in between uh, trying to do data sciences, machine learning, artificial intelligence on both sides of the network. And then as you start combining the signals together, it becomes more complex. And I'll come to that part of the journey. And that is a typical continuum. As you grow from hindsight, to insight to the foresight part. So foresight definitely, currently that is where we are in the journey. It's a long journey, obviously, data journeys are always longer because you have to collect a lot of data 
lot of good quality data. It has, the corpus has to be big enough for you to run a data science model on it. So I'll give you some examples down, uh, down the stream. Uh, I'll, let me quickly walk you through our early days. Now, when I do this one, when I wrote this slide, I thought, yeah, I mean, this is our journey. But what does the audience get out of it? I mean, all of you would be wondering, ha, ye to acha hai. But this is your story, and how can we probably align with that in case you're not there already? Some of you might be, and some of you are. But in case you're not there, then is there a recipe for me to get started and also uh, take a journey like this? So the right, bottom right, is something that is a recipe. I'll come to that. I have one dedicated slide on that, which I'll probably talk a little bit in detail. But let me take you through our early days. As I said, we, we are in the middle of a two-sided. One is on the, on one side you have the supply, on one side you have the demand. So you do data mining and data analysis and data insights on both sides of the network. So that is when the early days we started looking at the transactions. Not the search data, but just the transacted data. And that was the first uh, use case that we implemented that we will put consumers, uh, our users into cohorts based on what they have transacted, not what they have searched, but only the transaction because it takes a lot of, the search data is huge, the transaction data is not that big, so it's easier to mine. And that's the first step that I, I think almost everyone takes. Uh, you put users into broad segments, and then you probably do some cross-sell, upsell into those segments, recommendations into those segments. On the supply side, again, you do similar stuff, just based on the static data. Uh, similarity of hotels, for instance, not all hotels, I mean, when you are displaying a bunch of hotels, a set of hotels to the user in your listing page, it's not just a random, just a star rating or just the amenities or just the price. It's also in that hyperlocation and the user preferences, what would the user consider as similar? So all of that happened. Persuasions, again, last room left, or rooms selling fast, why don't you book now? Stuff like that, so all of that persuasions. That is, again, purely on the supply side. There's, there's, uh, that, that's how we started. As you get more mature into the system, you start marrying the user data, two sides of the network, the user and the supply start coming together. And that is what you can see on our hotel's ranking page, the listing page. Each and every one of us actually sees a different hotel listing, depending on how we understand you as a customer and how we group the hotels as similar hotels and what you're likely to purchase. To the extent that today more than 80% of the hotels are actually coming from the first space that you would see on our site. So it's as relevant. I mean, we don't want you to struggle finding because if you were sitting in Google's presentation yesterday, there's overwhelming amount of data out there. And you don't want to, I mean, we just want to make it easier for you to parse through all of that data and make sense. And I'll come to a few very relevant examples uh, in subsequent slides. As I said, user and supply marrying the both sides together, both sides of the network together. Uh, recommendations get much richer as you understand both the characteristics of both the supply side and the demand side. Again, whatever personalization or recommendations that we were doing earlier, if you come to my site today, I will learn enough about you and then if you come back tomorrow, I can probably show you a much better recommendation system. And that is not good enough because you might not come back tomorrow to, to search for the same thing. So it's very important for us to try and personalize in the same session if I can personalize things for you and if I can make it more relevant. And that is where the near real time thing comes into picture. Uh, a lot of technology goes behind this. Again, a discussion for some other time, but a lot of detail on the way the data flows. How do you marry the session data with everything else that I knew about you till yesterday. So all of that, combining all of that together, so near real time is something that we just started doing from last year. That's a hard problem even on the technology side and how to personalize your session within, personalize your offerings within the session itself. And then the last one is true AI, ML, uh, and generative AI. And we've heard a lot about generative AI in the last one year at least, and I'll probably show, show you some examples of that also. But uh, Again, a data journey that has 
taken us several years to come to this stage. We started pushing this theme of travel smarter uh, last year, year before last, where uh, uh, we will make it easy for you to transact. If you are really worried about fares going up, for instance, flight fares going up, there's anxiety. Uh, we'll address that anxiety quickly, and I'll tell you that you can lock your fares now. If the prices go up, we will absorb the difference. If it goes down, then you buy the uh, ticket at the lower price. Again, a lot of data science modeling has to happen here, because depending on when you're buying, who's buying, what kind of, what is the velocity of sale of that segment on that particular day. So a lot of uh, projection, a lot of probability calculation has to happen in the data science model. Second one, again, is similar, which is the trip guarantee, which is uh, depending on the probability of your ticket being confirmed from a waitlisted state to a confirmed state. If the ticket is not confirmed, then we'll give you 3x the difference. That probably you can use to upgrade your travel, probably to a higher class in the train, or take a bus, or even take a flight. You can apply that difference that you get to, the, to that. So, Again, a very, so these set of features are very, very popular. And if you notice our product, most of the features that we've done over the last two years, they are mostly insight-driven features. Most of the popular features on our product, on our site, are all, uh, invariably, they are all insight-driven. Again, if you look at the last example, which is cluster search. Cluster search is more about uh, you're trying to book a ticket from A to B, but there's no confirmed ticket available. What we do is that on both sides, we take a 60 kilometer radius, assuming that you can drive to that station, and if you can give you that confirmed ticket, uh, that again helps a lot. So, so again, a customer delight feature that we have. Some more industry first that we are doing, uh, drivable distance, again, relevant to what most of you guys do. Uh, uh, near neighborhood hotels, uh, staycations, and this started a lot during the COVID times where people wanted to not take public transportation but drive themselves, and uh, homestays also became a lot more popular. Uh, again, uh, unexplored destinations, for instance. Uh, you want to go to Kerala, but you want suggestions, and where can you go? So these are the suggestions that we have, and we'll give you a list of cities that probably you should try one of these. So this, these are more exploratory. While you're exploring what to do, where to go, more, more to address that. And then the last one is a very obvious one, which is airport cab. So if you, if you take a flight, we know that you will need a cab both ways, from your home to the airport, from the airport to the home. So an obvious one, generative AI. So this, this is something that we embarked upon last year. And all of you must have heard a lot about chat GPT and generative AI. OpenAI, uh, yesterday they released, you can tell us, you can just write a paragraph of text and uh, they'll generate a realistic looking video also. So it's taking strides. I mean, every one month there's a new model coming in the market. Our premise has been that most of India that can transact in English is already transacting in English. And there's only 15 to 20% of India that can read, write, and comprehend English. So that leaves a much bigger population outside of the consideration set of people who can really come and shop for travel. While the GDP per capita is growing almost all, all over India. So we did launch a vernacular, a regional language site uh, a few years ago. Uh, limited success. And the reason is that if you look at travel, it's a very heavy form filling app. You have to fill out a lot of details before you can buy a travel product. Where are you coming from? <coughs> Where do you want to go? Tell me the date if you're traveling international and the passport number, this and that, visa. It's a heavy form filling app. To do a heavy form filling app, you need a keyboard which is also friendly. So if you look at the regional language keyboards, they are not the friendliest ones to use. And therefore, travel actually will suffer a lot if you don't. Just the site being in Hindi or in Tamil will not help the consumer because it's very difficult to type in those languages. And that's where we went back to generative AI capability and start do, uh, started doing uh, language translations and then enabled voice on top of that. 
So now you can ski speak uh, and then book your travel. So this is how our flight spot looks like. You can speak into it. You can talk in Hindi or English today and you can book your flights. Not all the use cases are implemented as we are experimenting uh, with how it gets adopted in the hinterland, the larger Bharat. Uh, so that's the entire flow for the flights bot. Again, continuing all the way till the payments. Hotels, again, because of this whole overload of data, which is overwhelming, uh, we are trying to make it easy for you to locate the right accommodation option. So people like you who have had, not only people like you, but also people who have traveled with a similar context, business travel, for instance, or family travel, vacations, I, you are interested in reading reviews only of those people, people who are like you and whose travel context has been similar. So that is what we are trying to do here, uh, highlighting it a little bit, short summary and that seek tags are again towards that. You just want to know about what kind of food, what kind of restaurants are there in the hotel. You can just click on that and move forward. Looks like there is a lag. Seek tags I talked about already. So let me run through the next one. Same, same stuff that we are doing in holidays also. Uh, depending on who's shopping, we'll sh show you relevant summary of, the, of that holiday package, which might be appealing to you. Now let's come back to you. I, mean, I said I'll probably have a full slide of how you can get started. Uh, one of the things that we saw during COVID, and that was more of a survival thing, the airline industry, and I'm comparing directly, uh, because that's what I see from a technology perspective. Because the government didn't want the airports to be crowded, a lot of automation had to happen. Web check-in, seat selection, everything had to happen through technology. And a lot of investment into tech went from the airline side. I did not see, at least from my perspective, and I might be completely wrong here, but that same investment into technology has not happened in the hotel segment, for instance. A lot of API automation and all that has happened on the back end. That I have not seen here. So the last question is, do you guys even have a tech budget? I didn't hear any of the conversations here which said that now that the entire industry is doing so well, let me spend 5%, 10% more on my tech budget. I haven't heard any of those conversations. So probably in good times, you should start thinking about the good things in technology also, which can be core differentiators for you. A lot of data is offline, for instance. Some is online. I think some serious thought has to go into consolidating all of that. And then there's a journey of data capability and leveraging the uh, generative AI. But that's further down on the journey. The first st step, again, is to consolidate and figure out that the data is really critical to you. You do get a, uh, some, some competitive advantage and customer delight knowing by knowing more about the consumer. We all talk about personalization, and I say you can monetize a lot more while the customer is at the hotel. Now, how do you do that? You have to know that consumer really, 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 really well. Personalization, and it sounds very counterintuitive, personalization is best done by machines, not by persons. We talk about personalization, but if you really want to do true personalization, it has to become a part of the system. It has to become a part of the memory that each and every person at the reception, they are all aware that this customer, someone was giving that example just now in the previous session that about uh, needing a pillow which is a bit harder, firmer pillow. If that goes into the system, whether the person, whether the consumer comes into that particular hotel or any of your hotel chains, any of the hotels in the chain, you know that this person would prefer a harder pillow, a firmer pillow, and therefore you can give. That person remembering or not remembering at that particular hotel doesn't really matter. So true personalization will happen through machines, not through people. So I think I've said that a few times already. What else can we do? I mean, at least from a OTA perspective, we are happy to partner and send you signals within the confines of what is allowable to be shared 
more in an aggregated form or as a cohort. But uh, we can partner and give you a little bit, a few more signals because we see that consumer across all hotels, across all chains, across all travel uh, options. We can give you better signals there so we can partner and then revenue management, loyalty management, unbundling is something that Flights is doing pretty well. Probably not everyone wants the same package all the time so you can unbundle and make more and I've talked about the monetization. And that brings me to the end of the presentation, just in time. Thank you.